Why does he not have a barb? It's a stinger. He doesn't have a barb. He doesn't have a barb. It's a fire one. It's a fire stinger. You see the spikes? Spikes on the back. Look at that. How fat it is. Wow. This is even as fat as fat. It's my first time. Yeah. I have a big, big stinger tonight, bro. <laughs> you want to have a stinger tonight, bro? Yeah, let's do it. Taste? Yeah. Chuck him in. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. That was wild. That was absolutely wild. Holy hell! Yeah, hey. oh, I don't even know if I filmed that because I was just watching in awe like What are you guys doing? <laughs> oh. Oh, man. That's it bro And we, was, we were looking for this thing all the time And now we found one uh, It's gonna be a big beat Yeah. So these spiky ones there yeah. The spike look at They don't have a barb This one you That's when they use the weapon to fight as well Oh really? Yeah when they cut first, they just busted. Yeah, right. They're really hard, those yeah. bikes, eh? <laughs> that was awesome, mate. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> oh, that was so cool. <laughs> You guys forgot a spear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm excited for tonight. Have something different, I brought yeah. something new. That's it. Something Even new. seeing you guys do that was amazing. <laughs> I couldn't believe you because I thought it had a barb. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> I jumped on a stingray. <laughs> yeah. That's what we call them. File stingrays. File. Stingray. Yeah. File. Oh, rough, Feel rough all the They're real rough, eh? Yes. Oh, yeah. Feel it underneath there. Well, it's pretty sore when you start stand on it. Yeah. Paradise, Johnny. No, bro. This is your paradise, eh? Yeah. <laughs> you see a little shark out here? Yeah, just down. See that? Oh, yeah? Yeah, really? Black out He looks pretty, Black pretty big, eh? Yeah. It's a pretty big one. Oh, I'm going to have a little swim, yeah. yeah. But when you go to Nightland, bro, that's another big, long beach, like. We'll just, you can walk for miles with it. Yeah. <laughs> Absolute legends, eh? Oh, man. What a life they live up here. <sighs> so, guys, this is, this is Ungalo's country from the story I've been telling you about. So, you imagine 14 years old being left cast away on a, on a beach just like this. We're gonna head to his country where his clan was, the Night Island people. We're gonna, the boy's gonna take me down there tomorrow so we actually get to see the beach where he landed. Um, and he, you know, we'll be able to imagine the camps, where they camp, things like that. It's gonna be, I'm so excited about it. But you imagine being stranded here 14 years old and a clan of, you know, 
the only thing you'd, you'd, you'd be able to put it down to is savages coming out of the bush, but then they rescue you, take you in. Um, apparently, Narcisse, his name was at the time, he had a little tin cup, that's all he had. And he, uh, when they came up to him, they started talking in their language, which he obviously couldn't talk and he was a French boy. And he held up the cup like a trade. And I think, you know, Aboriginal people are big on trading things. And I think that was, that, that was like the saving grace in a way. Um, he traded them that and then they took him in and they fed him and, um, and then he made some, made some really close friends. He had, he had a, there was another young fella named Sassy who became his best friend and you imagine at that age, 14 years old, over the next three years he has to learn to speak their language, he has to learn about their culture which is so intricate and um, all their customs and things you can and can't do, things you can and can't say, um, you know, people you can and can't look at, you can't talk to, it's, it's so involved. And he had to learn all that. And then at 17 years old, he was initiated as a Night Island man. <sighs> Amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. Him go? Yeah. Was he a big, on, big old one, was it? Yeah. See him? See him? Where'd he go? Wait a minute. I'll drive you and record him. Hey. Hang on, mate. Yeah, you're right. <coughs> hey, he's a bit old. Yeah. yeah. Big old one. Get them small, young side. Yeah, you want a fat young one. So I heard some like the old men would break a branch over so that all the shoots come up straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But not, but don't kill it. But you, you, you'll find like some of them go by themselves and they yeah. go straight up and then. So this is your salt water tree, and then yeah. you got a fresh water one too. Does this one go yeah. into the fresh? Fresh. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, always along the riverbed, but um, we call it kupui in our language. Kupui. Yeah, and it's got a real stringy. They make rope from it. Um, they make rope, they make, um, you watch them, all, uh, people walk along the beach, they'll, they'll um, cut this tree and come, my, a good string comes out of it. What about the men with when they'd wear a belt <clears throat> with the... Yeah, the same. This is it? Yeah. Or hair or something. And somewhere. they make net, you know, yeah. net fishing net. That's amazing. I didn't know that until recently, how yeah. intricate their nets were, how yeah. big they were. Yeah, they make from... The bark of the same tree. Some of them are very stringy, you know. Mm. You make the skirt for dancing. Mm. Come from the same tree. Um, well, yeah, gutted, gilled, straight on the coals, mate. Yeah, bro, on the coals. And then we'll sort, sort that out. Yeah. It's like we didn't even have trebles on our lures today, hey? Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. It just got beyond a joke in the end. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. Well, 
bit of salt, a couple of cold drinks. I'm gonna sit under here in the shade with Tremaine. It's ready, eh? Tinny's on the roof, hard work's done. Just gotta throw the little tinny trailer up in under the tinny. Thank you, bro. You're welcome. Before we head back to base camp to cook up this um, this stingray, which is going to be really interesting, make sure you hang around for that. Um, I wanted to show you guys the old mission here before we leave. So as you can see, there's kind of structures everywhere. A couple here, a couple up, well, there's one there up behind my ute. There's tin everywhere. This was the site of the old mission, as we said earlier when we first came in here. So in 1924, well, you know, for thousands of years, there were three main tribes along this coastline. So it started to the south was the Umpala, and then uh, Utalanganu, and then uh, Kukuyao, which is up, up north, like um, up towards the Pasco River. Now, within those tribes, there were several clans. I think in each is, you know, they're all different, but say 10 to 15 clans within each tribe. So a tribe is like a language group. Within that language group, within that tribe, there are several clans and several families and a very intricate system for marriage, you know, for they, they had this very intricate system, which I might try and get an elder to go into it with you guys so that I don't have to, you know, try and decipher it to you. Um, I have a very basic understanding within my head and it's, it's, it's amazing, but hopefully this season we can go into it a bit deeper. But in 1924, those three tribes were brought here to this area uh, to an Anglican mission. Now the reason for that, different reasons, but this happened all over Australia. Um, you know, basically they thought that the tribes were savages. The children were being mistreated. Um, they needed an education. They needed to be brought into into our system, you know, into the white world and the kids needed to be educated, schooled. Um, so they were stripped of their culture, they were stripped of their language. Um, every mission was different though, it depends who was running the mission, right? So some missions were still very big on culture, very big on keeping that whilst learning about God, you know, that was the religion was the big thing. But this was, um, this was the site where the three tribes all came together and lived from 1924 till about 1960 something I think that's when it moved to the to the site now up north of here which is Lockhart River and it's been there ever since but this place is still a very special place for all the locals in Lockhart River um, the road to here has just been done and it's actually quite good so that the locals only can come out here and experience this place and feel it because there's obviously an abundance of food as we've seen the mangoes coconuts um, and then all the natives up there in the bush and then obviously out the front here these three tribes were all um, ocean going people. So they all made uh, canoes, um, what do you want to call them? They're basically dugouts, canoes, and they all hunted dugong and turtle, particularly the Night Island people, which is where we're going to go tomorrow. They were, they were really well known for it. So pretty excited to get down there tomorrow and show you guys um, the country where Umglo ended up being, where he was initiated to be a man. A, uh, a night island man. Um, Unglo took two wives. There's a couple of stories there where I'll tell you tomorrow. And he had two children. Actually, I think he ended up with three wives. Very interesting. Um, something that obviously our culture doesn't doesn't allow. And if you go back to the previous episodes, Johnny Johnny from um, Western Yalangi, he said the same thing. He said that's the one part of his culture that his wife wouldn't allow. <laughs> so anyway, as you can see, mango trees everywhere. A shack up there that's still, still in um, in use by the locals, and then just lots of old shelters that you can see here. Just a lot of history, hey. Really interesting. I love walking around places like this and just feeling the history here. Um, that's a spear shaft tree that you can see down there. I think it's a beach hibiscus. So that's what they get the 
the spear rods out of, like you've seen us do with Uncle Les over in Kawanyama. But yeah, we're gonna jump back in the cruiser and uh, head back to base camp. It's bloody hot out here. I can't wait to have a big glass of water, sit in the shade for a little bit, and then um, start learning about how to prepare Stingray. It's interesting to hear what Wayne said about the stingray being a wet season too. So the liver of the stingray apparently in from this time, like the first rain, the liver comes good and it's good till like end of February, which is when the local clans here will hunt the stingray. So everything has a time of the year, hey, that you want to hunt and eat it. time at the camp here um, I cooked up a feed for everyone and uh, which is just something I like to do normally I cook a big roast or something like that um, but tonight Tremaine's returning the favor and cooking up one of the most traditional meals that you can have around here which is um, stingray so I'll take you guys over there now we're gonna get it all prepared and I'm gonna learn a whole lot something I've wanted to do for years Um, one where I'm going to cook a few. Oh, went and breakfast. I roll. We dropped so many barra. Ah, oh, yeah, we dropped yeah. a good lot. But well, we weren't up there very long, eh? In the creek. We were walking the creek. Yeah. Come on, get one more. Yeah. Have you done this a bit? Oh. Have you done this? Yeah. Done this? yeah. The first part, help, bro. Take off the guts. Take out the gut and that's the fat there, bro. That's the fat. See that? Oh, yeah. That's the liver. The liver makes it greasy. This is the liver, eh? Yep. There's that bone in there, cartilage. Um, yeah. Whoa! That's the level, bro. Holy dooly. That's massive. Oh. See the road has the poison in there somewhere? There's poison. This bag. Oh, yeah. That's a massive. Yeah, look the road. So you gotta keep that out. Ooh, what number do you can? Easel. Take one first, but we go fuck the one this one. Take one. So you stay away from that bit, eh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll put them in the rescue one time. Oh, you need another ball. Yeah. That's the good stuff. Yep, that's yeah. the good stuff. That's, that's the greasy stuff. I need to cook the onion for it then. Oh, look there, bro. Run and fuck. Oh. Nice and fat. Fine, nobody knows if they're really fat or not. <laughs> yeah, because they're fat by middle lip. Yeah. Mm. Oh, So there's heaps of these around, they're not rare. Because yeah, yeah. like when you guys jumped on it, you knew exactly what it was, hey? Yeah. 
Yeah. So mine got a bigger one like this. Yeah. Yeah, way bigger. It was oh, the size right. of the table. <laughs> Caught it with um, a spe spear today, down at Quintal. No, 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 no. But if you're going to jump on it, you obviously get, you have to you have to be sure. Yeah, that's the guy. <laughs> What am I missing? Now you just want to show you peeling, the peeling process of ah. it. You can cooked. have some of that too. Yeah. yeah. You can oh, have I it don't know. Without, yeah, I'm getting uh, nervous. You can have it without the liver as well. Where's well, the salt? It tastes better with the salt. Yeah. Everything tastes better with the salt. So what are you doing, guys? Just peeling it. Peeling the skin off. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to have a taste. Thank you. Nice you like it? Yes, it's delicious. I can't wait. Well, it is actually really good. It's a different well, texture actually, though, it hey? It's like tastes ten gooey. times better with the liver. Does it? Yeah. yeah. And onion. It's definitely a gooey kind of texture, but it's yum. It's like when you cook shark. Have you tasted shark? Mm. Yeah, it is. Yeah, hey. it's the same. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. doesn't take that long. Though, it doesn't take that long because it's soft meat. Yeah. yeah, and then once he's done done with that, he will have to. Squeeze it into a shirt to get the excess water. Mm -hmm. mm. And then I'll start chopping up the onion and cooking the liver. Then you just Chop little it. at a little time, throwing that in, frying it with it. Yeah. How do you cook the liver? You just fry it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cut it up. Chuck it all in. Chuck it all in with the onion. Mix it up. Mix it up. Get ready to eat. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of meat there, hey? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, nice. Where'd you get that? You growing them? Yeah, I forgot to grow them. I got a fruit tree at the Yeah, It's full of purple in there. We just looked at some of the video from today. Yeah. Jumping on the stingray in the turtle. <laughs> it's good, yeah. eh? Hey? Really good. Put them there. You're doing the liver. Yeah. <coughs> so you want oh, a bit of onion and yeah. Yeah, liver. Yeah. I think you have to add more liver, brothers. Yeah. But wait, that's all you Yeah, what do you do? You, you have to have the right amount of liver to go with the meat? Yeah. Mm. Then, yeah, yeah. yeah. you're ready. Oh, yeah. Must have boiled or something. Oh, I got a big white boy. Yes, Come on! Come on! Yeah. Come on! 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 Mm -hmm. wow. They're chasing the back here. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Get back! You don't have to run it all the way to the other side. They down the creek, the other side. Down the other side. Can I get in? Yeah, bro. 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 Yeah, b
So we're just at camp cooking dinner and the dogs took off. We can hear them going nuts down the other side of the creek here, yeah, they've got a pig. Dogs, they're fucking like they follow me from camp to the dogs here. Yeah. All the mice will be fine. Yeah. So all the dogs are running. Run, Papyrus been there. Ah. Yeah. What the hell? The head is. There you go. <laughs> Pretty normal event up here, I think. Really? <laughs> So the pig's on the roof. I think that's a pretty normal event as well. Good mate. Yeah bro. We're just fixing up a stingray <laughs> dinner for tonight, eh bro? Now we got some bacon. Yeah. Some pork. Some pork. So you had that thing gutted pretty quick. Ah oh, yeah, with the knife. You do that a bit, eh? Yeah. Alright oh, mate, it really is just all here, eh? Yeah, like stingray, bloody pigs, mangoes, it's all here. Barramundi. Probably some craze tomorrow. Yeah. Well. So where can, I, where can I build my house? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got the little house there. <laughs> I love it. Come on. Into the flat. Oh, so it doesn't go in in balls, it just goes in, you separate it there? Yeah, it depends. If you want to put it in balls, you can. Okay. Mm. Well, we're just going to spread it. There's all different ways to do it. Yeah. So this would be like a mince, a big mince? Yeah, technically. What do you call it again? Mubbles. Mubbles? Yep. Well, wow, this is smelling really good now, hey? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm excited now. Yep. What have you got here, Johnny? Mubbles. Yeah, that's mubbles. Can have a little taste. So that's with the liver in it? Yeah, that's with the liver in it. Okay. Oh, the texture is amazing. Can you have a plate, mate? No worries. Have a, have a good day, Thanks, right? mate. No that's awesome. <laughs> The texture, it's almost like pulled pork. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, you can oh, feel yeah. it's just the grease and that, it's just a little fat. Oh, it's so good. How are you, bro? Can you come and play? No, I'll wait for everyone. No, don't wait for us. No, don't wait for us, please. <laughs> we know there's going to be heaps left. Wow. That is absolutely amazing. How was that? <laughs> I'm going back for more. Yeah. <laughs> I can't get enough of this stuff. It really is like a mixture between pulled pork and like roast chicken. Yeah, yeah. Very happy with that. This is first time. First time I've ever had it. <laughs> That's how you do it with a flat tail and that. But everybody like when it's we always rush for that one now. Yeah. Yeah, we love that. Yeah, yeah, bro. It's a massive. Should have cut his spear, you know what I mean? More, eh? more, 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 what a way to wrap up the episode. That was epic. 
Oh, what an amazing day yesterday was with Tremaine, and Johnny down the coast. You know, seeing seeing them jump on that turtle, jump on that stingray, absolutely amazing bit of their culture. Um, and I'm so privileged to be able to experience it like that. So we'll jump back in the car now with Tremaine, but big thanks to Tremaine for having us out here on country. Um, if you guys want your merch, wildreaches.com. If you want to be a part of Patreon, uh, patreon.com forward slash wildreaches. Make sure you come back next week because this episode today where we're going to camp tonight is God's country. I can't wait to get in there and experience it. That's the end of the episode, mate, from yesterday. Thanks for having us. Yeah, bro. What a way to finish it, eh, with a palm cockatoo. Yeah. That was epic. I think there's like five of them flying around. Yeah. One more still sitting there. Yeah. In, the, in the back, you see his head? Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, he's sort of sitting there. Yeah. All right, we'll see you all next week. We're going to go have some fun.